Billionaire Elon Musk has had a brutal couple of weeks following his takeover of Twitter, and I think that it's abundantly clear that he's in over his head, and he has no idea what he's doing, and I think it's just hilarious to watch. First of all, after laying off around half of Twitter's workforce, the company actually reached out to dozens of employees that they had laid off, asking them to return to work, claiming that the layoffs were a mistake, sure. Now, also, advertisers have fled the platform following a surge in racial slurs and also their new owner tweeting out misinformation probably had something to do with that as well but more on that later because the biggest problem for elon musk is apparently hurt fifis yeah so the biggest change that he's making is he's revising twitter's tos or the rules maybe not the tos itself but he's certainly making changes to the rules after a comedian made fun of him and he didn't like it. So Kathy Griffin, she changed her Twitter profile name to Elon Musk and she began to make fun of him by impersonating him. That led to her getting suspended and Elon Musk tweeted this after her suspension. Going forward, any Twitter handles engaging in impersonations without clearly specifying parody will be permanently suspended. Previously, we issued a warning before suspension, but now we are rolling out widespread verification. There will be no warning. This will be clearly identified as a condition for signing up to Twitter Blue. Any name change at all will cause temporary loss of verified checkmark. And that last point, Temporary loss to verified checkmark is probably him trying to sell Twitter blue and encourage people who already are verified to pay. So if you revoke verification, then perhaps maybe you get a couple of suckers to pay. But effectively, what he's doing here is he's cracking down on comedy. Now, let me remind you what Elon Musk said when he just bought Twitter. He announced comedy is now legal on Twitter. And back in 2021, he advocated for comedy to be legalized which I, I guess that means on Twitter. Um, I, I haven't heard about the ban on comedy per se, but I mean, certainly on Twitter, it's not allowed at least when it comes to impersonating its owner, Elon Musk. Now, after Kathy Griffin was banned and Elon Musk made this announcement, well, H3, H3 Productions decided to follow his guidelines very carefully. So they changed their name to Elon Musk and adopted an Elon Musk profile picture. And in the header of their page, they clearly labeled that a parody account. But despite the fact that they made it very clear that it was a parody, perhaps the tweets about Jeffrey Epstein were just a little bit too much for Elon Musk to take, so they were suspended as well. Although I haven't actually been banned for very seriously inquiring about whether or not we can post this photo of him with Ghislaine Maxwell, I'll report back to you if anything changes, but for now, seems like that's still allowed. But that may soon change if he gets in his head and gets in his feelings and feels a little bit angry that people are posting that photo, which not a good look for him, right? He was photobombed, bro. That's what people respond saying. There's so many simps on Twitter still for Elon Musk. It's hilarious. Uh, but he very clearly is scrolling through, looking at people who are making fun of him, steaming, and then they're getting banned. The fact that the richest man on the planet is doing this, he's that online and he can't log off of Twitter and is getting personally offended by people impersonating him to the point where he's changing Twitter's rules is just so hilarious to me. Now, journalist Scott Nover points to an interview that he did with Elon Musk for The Atlantic back in 2019. And this quote is really interesting to me from Elon Musk from that particular interview where he says, accurate and entertaining satire is vital to a functioning democracy. Musk told told me on a phone call late Sunday night. Unless it's about me, he joked. Mm, turns out he was dead serious about that. Now, we already have established that Elon Musk is a thin-skinned man baby, but I think that what establishes that fact even more is um, this, where an advertiser who he seemingly spoke to tried to reach out in earnest to give him advice on how to attract advertisers back to the platform, and the way that it ended is pretty predictable given Elon's behavior as of late, but let's get to this. So Lou Pascalis, a brand marketer, actually responded to Elon Musk after he complained about a drop in Twitter revenue due to activists pressuring Twitter's advertisers, which I don't think is true, by the way. But he offered Musk some additional advice after chatting with him personally. He wrote, Elon, great chat yesterday. As you heard overwhelmingly from senior advertisers on the call, the issue concerning us all is content moderation and its impact on brand safety and suitability. You say you're committed to moderation, but you just laid off 
75% of the moderation team. He continues, advertisers are not being manipulated by activist groups. They are being compelled by established principles around the types of companies they can do business with. These principles include an assessment of the platform's commitment to brand safety and suitability. Now, I feel like this is common sense information. It doesn't take a brand marketer to explain this to you, at least for someone like me, I've been on YouTube for a very long time. I remember Adpocalypse in 2017 after there were Coca-Cola commercials for very unsavory content. And so we all know what advertisers are looking for. But Elon Musk apparently doesn't get that and he doesn't want to hear that because in response to Lou trying to give him genuine advice, well, Elon Musk blocked him. Lou tweeted, So for all the replies I received that content moderation equals denial of freedom of speech, it doesn't. What do you say about the fact that the chief twit just blocked me for exercising mine? So you have this brand marketer who's actually trying to give him advice to stop the company from hemorrhaging advertisers, and Elon Musk blocked him. Now, to be fair, Lou knows people who work at Twitter. So the people who work at Twitter, who Lou knows, convinced Elon to unblock him. So it ended with a happy ending, apparently, for Lou. But his instinct was to block the person who's trying to give him real advice. I mean, the richest man on the planet has single-handedly proved that anyone who's a billionaire is not by definition a genius. And a lot of them, especially if their names are Elon Musk are very, very thin-skinned to an embarrassing point. Look, I've been doing YouTube videos for a very long time, so I have a sense of what it's like to be a public figure. Not to the extent that Elon Musk is, to be fair, but you can't just log on and search for people who are criticizing you. Constantly respond to people who are criticizing you because that's gonna drive anyone crazy, regardless of how much money you have. And eventually you see it and you adapt and it doesn't affect you that much. But Elon Musk is such a huge man child that even after all these years of being a public figure, after having more money than any other human being on the planet, he's still really, really sensitive about people making fun of him. And that's just, so hilarious and sad to me, but I've got to say, and I pointed this out on Twitter, I don't think Twitter has been this fun since Trump got COVID, when everyone was just laughing and shitting on one person. That's happening again, all because Elon Musk decided to invest in a company, I think irresponsibly so, that isn't making money, and he's desperately trying to turn it into a money-making venture for himself, and rather than championing free speech, he's championing $8 speech. And I don't think that that's going to go particularly well, but we'll see. Either way, this is a train wreck, and I honestly can't look away. I haven't had this much fun on Twitter in a very long time. And I, uh, I plan to continue to laugh at Elon Musk until he ruins the entire website, which I didn't necessarily think was plausible. I didn't actually anticipate that much changes, but seeing his first couple of weeks, oh no, he wants to change a lot. And it's just... Okay, whatever. I think that if Twitter goes the way of the dodo, that might be a net benefit for humanity. Either way, it's just hilarious that it's all happening because of this thin-skinned idiot who got overconfident and wanted to be a hero, so he bought Twitter, and now it's not going his way. So he's melting down and banning anyone who makes fun of him. Just hilarious. These are your free speech champions, folks. Were you acting like a...